Well, hello everyone. This is our first installment of Devotions with Justin on Tuesdays. And I uh, just want to invite you to sit back, relax. Maybe you're going to listen in the car on your way to work. Regardless of uh, where you are, I hope this is a help to you. I'm going to look at just seven little words found in 2 Timothy 4.2. Preach in season and out of season. Paul writes these words to his young protege, Timothy. Paul is ending, the, uh, is ending his life, his earthly journey. He senses that his time on earth is about to be uh, ended. And so he writes these words to encourage Timothy, who is facing opposition wherever he goes, opposition from uh, Judaizers who want to revert back to the law, opposition from uh, those who are following emperor worship, at least a little bit at this time in, in Christian history, and also those that are enmeshed in the, the Roman pantheon of idol worship. Pre preach in season and out of season. And Paul is obviously using an agricultural concept here. You think of the beautiful olive trees and the, the terraces in Samaria. You think of the grape uh, arbors and the, the uh, vineyards that are scattered about in Israel and this, uh, that part of the world, the fruit trees. And one of the big things they produced was wheat. And um, Paul is using this uh, as a reminder that whether there is fruit that can be seen, we continue to follow Christ and preach up Jesus. Preach in season and out of season. And so we, whether we see fruit or not, I'm talking to all the pastors, the missionaries, those who teach Sunday school, those who are witnessing at their workplace, which is your pulpit. That is where you are called to preach and to be a witness for Christ. Even though we don't see fruit, in out of season, we keep on keeping on with Christ. There was once a kind of a prophet evangelist who spoke all over the country and his, uh, his audience was usually quite small. And this person at this one campus asked him, you know, no one hardly comes to listen to you. Why do you keep preaching and teaching the way you do? And he said these words, I've never forgot it, so I don't become like them. And so that's one of the reasons we keep preaching and teaching is that it keeps us fresh, it keeps us on edge with Christ as we follow him. The, uh, one of the things I think about out of season is, of course, when there's resistance to the gospel. And we're told repeatedly, especially in Timothy, uh, and other places in the New Testament, if we're going to be avid followers of Jesus, you need to expect resistance. You need to expect some form of persecution. I have suffered that in some small forms, and probably many of the rest of you have. But we keep on following the Lord. One of the things that one of the ways we get out of season is what I call emotionally out of season. When I was a young Christian, I used to think that God's presence was determined by my emotions. If I got Holy Spirit goosebumps, if I got that warm feeling. And when I didn't have those, I felt like God had forsaken me, that somehow God withdrew or I withdrew from God. And I put a lot of pressure on myself. I'm going to say to you, our emotional life is a bad barometer of trying to sense the presence of God. Our emotions are like a roller coaster. We're up here on the rails. And God is not the God of emotion, said Dietrich Bonhoeffer. God is the God of truth. And that word theologically, aletheia, means genuine, real, consistent. And that's the word I kind of hone in on when I hear the word truth theologically as Bonhoeffer is using it. And so we don't focus on our emotions in our journey. We focus on the substructure that holds up the rails of the roller coaster. That firm foundation, all the wood that's used to build the substructure, or nowadays in the, with the new coasters, the big steel pipes and beams that hold the coaster rails. The second thing is that physically we can feel like we're out of season with God. I've just come through 55 days of recovering from COVID-19, nearly lost my life. Uh, thanks be to God for all the health care workers on the front line, skilled, compassionate, encouraging, that were able to get me restored and are still restoring me. C.S. Lewis says that God whispers to us in our joy, 
but shouts at us through a megaphone in our pain. I think that's something for us to consider. That when we are ill, it's a great time for us to reflect, to think about our relationship with God, with our family, with our neighbors, with our enemies, and do an a, a existential in, uh, assessment and inventory of who we are, what are our attitudes, and how are we behaving. John Woolman, the great Quaker who preached against uh, the human beings owning other human beings a hundred and some years before the Civil War, said that he understood illness as a gift from God where we face our mortality. And we can use that time to deepen our relationship with God, ourselves, and others. So sometimes we're out of season, at least we feel that way emotionally. Sometimes when we don't feel good, we feel out of season physically. But we're supposed to keep preaching in season and out of season regardless. The third way is spiritual is spiritually. Sometimes, and the, the great spiritual giants talk about this, some refer to it as the dark night of the soul, when we feel like our prayers hit the ceiling, we have no kind of empirical evidence, we don't have any kind of emotion uh, concerning our relationship with the Lord Jesus, with God and the Holy Spirit. It's those times when God, I think, leaves us alone with just our faith, with just our trust in Him and His goodness. And then that is where we have to rely upon His promises that He will never leave nor forsake us, that He loves us with an everlasting love. And that is kind of a spiritual out of season. But even then, we are to preach the gospel, to bear witness to Jesus. These are dry seasons, this spirituality, when we uh, feel like we're pulled back. And it's um, important for us to remember that God is, again, we're going back to emotions. God is not the God of emotions. He's the God of truth. He's the God of consistency and love. Another way that, um, uh, that we can see is uh, out of season is contextually or environmentally. I've got those, those words used here together. We know that there's resistance to the gospel because it calls us to a higher level of being human beings, that we get closer to normal. We get closer to Christ who is the normal. He is the man for God and he represents the God for man. So when we hit resistance and when we're trying to share the gospel, it is important for us to contextually know who we're talking to that we get inside of their minds and their thinking and their worldview to understand how they're viewing God, how they're viewing themselves, how they're viewing the world, so that we can speak life into those places in them that are uh, stunted and perhaps even dead. The Apostle Paul leaves us a great illustration of this. He goes to Athens. He walks around Athens. He looks at all the the uh, idols and the great magnificent temples to, to these gods in the Roman pantheon. And he comes back and says, I see that you are very religious. For I walked around, I think that's interesting, for I walked around and observed your objects of worship. And I am here to say that I found an altar that says, by inscription to the unknown God, and I'm now going to proclaim that unknown God to you. Notice how Paul did this. He walked around. He observed. And sometimes we don't really observe people. We just kind of treat them as just another statistic or somebody. We don't get to know them. And friends, Christianity is spread by relationship and us investing into people to show them that God loves them. And if we don't do that, then we're just blowing smoke and wasting our time and being a poor witness for Jesus. The Apostle Paul also writes in 2 Corinthians 9, 20 and 22. These were texts that kind of stumped me for many years. But the uh, uh, great scholar N.T. Wright really opened my eyes to what Paul is meaning here. In 2 Corinthians 9, he says, To the Jews I became like a Jew, to win the Jews. For those not having 
the law, I became like one not having the law. He's now talking about Gentiles. I became weak to win the weak. I have become all things to all men, so that I, it may be possible by any means that I might save some. Now what Paul is saying to us is that he got, he already knew the mind of the Jew. Then he got to know the mind of the Gentile. And then he got to know the mind of the weak. So that he could speak into those places, into those kinds of situations. He knew them and thought about their worldview and how they look at life and themselves. As I conclude today, I want to challenge us that uh, what I'm talking about in this uh, preach in season and out of season is just not for pastors. It's just not for missionaries. It's not for religious uh, professionals. Jesus wants everyone to be a witness. We're all called to be a witness for him in the kingdom. In Acts 1.8, we're told by Jesus, you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Samaria, and to the utter ends of the earth. We're told that he said that to 120 Jewish believers, the first church. He didn't say that to the 12, or excuse me, to the 11 disciples, because Judas has already bailed. But he's saying that to the entire church. We look at uh, Revelation 19, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And that text is referring to that in Jesus, all the prophecy of the Old Testament is fulfilled in him. Paul says a parallel uh, thought when he says in 2 Corinthians 1.20, Yet, no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. The promises of God are made yes in Christ. So whenever we talk about Jesus, whenever we talk about this Savior who has come to rescue the world and set the world right, we're talking about the fulfillment of all of God's promises and His prophecy. I want to encourage you that your labor in Jesus, as Paul says in another letter, is not in vain. During this time of, of recuperating, I received about 700 e-cards, paper cards, wishing me well, praying for me. And I've had a number of people on Facebook notify me. One that really struck me was, Dear Justin, 15 years ago you buried my little boy. And out of that ministry that you performed for us and the gentleness of your spirit moved me to go back to church with my family and my husband. You got us going again in thinking about God and following Jesus. Now I'm gonna tell you something. That was 15 years ago. That's what keeps you in the game in Christianity is when you hear these testimonies. Because I thought, wow, I'm doing all these things, but it doesn't seem like much is happening. Oh, we cannot see what's going on in people's hearts and their minds. So keep at the task, keep following Jesus and know that you are critically important in your workplace and in your family to bear witness to this Jesus. So preach in season and preach out of season. God bless you.